Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is May 23rd, 2022, and this is episode 110. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my ocular co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. (laughs) Welcome, everyone. Hello. Before we get started, we do want to remind our listeners that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. So if there is something in the Cosmere that you haven't read and you are worried about hearing spoilers, and honestly, if you haven't read it, you should be worried about spoilers because the storytelling in this series is amazing, then I would recommend heading over, reading those first, then coming back and joining in on this discussion. When we uh, looked back at our previous topics, we realized that although we have discussed the art from the Way of Kings and Oathbringer, somehow we skipped right over Words of Radiance. So tonight we're, just, we're gonna we're just, rectify it, that. It was good. It was just it was like, you know what? We need to hold off on that one. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna throw in negligence. a curveball. Yeah. Not negligence whatsoever. Why we're gonna would we savor it? Oh dear. <sighs> for those who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we do want to remind you that it's possible for listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us. Take an active part of the discussion. Also, tonight, because we're discussing the art, if you listen to the audio versions of the podcast, you might want to check out the videos because we're going to have the images up and available. And otherwise, it's in the it's in the books and it's definitely worth checking out because my gosh these are gorgeous it, and, and if you're it helps to if, if you're exactly wondering where they are about. in the books um there's a table the of contents notes. at the beginning well there's <laughs> no, just that there's also the show notes you can also We're, check the show notes we have a link show, to that in i the find the show notes very useful today because um although a lot of people's uh Oh my goodness, I forgot the word. Handwriting is very nice. I find it difficult to read all the same. So mm. Bill's transcription, I find, is very nice. Yeah, y'all owe me money for that, by the way, because my gosh, that was frustrating. Oh, okay, sorry. well, on the desk, I have uh, two quarters, two dimes. I made you a missed cloak. Does that count? Dang, you she's got the trump card. She can just <laughs> lay that out at any point, can't she? But what, what have mom you done th- for me lately? <laughs> That is a mom move right there. <laughs> All those hours I spent giving birth to you. <laughs> you I actually don't do. Th- I don't pull that on my kids. I not don't. yet. They're not teenagers. You don't need to pull out the trump cards. Yet. Oh, man. Uh, I don't want to think about that yet. Getting speaking of. Digits, though. That's a future speaking, Amy problem. Yes. Go ahead. Bill. Speaking of guilt and owing. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible, and we owe a lot of thanks to the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. A buck or two per episode would really, really help us out as we work to improve the show. Patrons, of course, get immediate access to our Discord channel, where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners and these listeners are awesome people. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate them and love them. It's a great community with a lot of great discussions, and you get early access to bonus episodes. You'll get exclusive access to other bonus content and other good stuff. Yeah. Now, Jordan, can we check in with you on the read along for uh, yes, as we yes, prepare? Yes, we can. Um, the next episode, which has been delayed by like a full month at this point, um, it is now officially all recorded, and I just got to edit it together. And it's looking uh, just with my schedule. It's looking like we're going to get two, three, maybe episodes up this week. I, I don't want to promise the three, but okay. two two's looking uh, very nice. Awesome. Okay. All right. And on that note, let's just dive in. So there are so very many oh, wonderful yeah. pictures in this book. 
Um, so the first, yeah. and, and a lot of them are from Shalon's sketchbook. So let's start mm-hmm. off with the first one, which is her drawing of a Santhid. Yep. Now, now this Boom. one's kind of cool up. because it is her perspective, you know, because we have the scene where she dives into the, uh, into the water or is lowered into the water so that she can sketch yeah. the, um, the Santhid, the, the creature that's following them along and it's considered to be very, very good luck. Um, there we go. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry. It, I'm watching. I'm watching the pictures the streaming show. by. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We're gonna. While well, you guys talk about the Santa, Jordan's gonna be double checking. So it looks happened. like at first glance, it looks like a turtle, you know, from the top. But then when you get down to it, it's kind of like a Portuguese man of war crossed with the turtle. Uh, okay. something like that. I had not considered the the man of war, but now that you mention it, yeah, it's okay. A, super uh, long tendrils going on there. I was yeah. thinking almost like a, a trilobite. Oh yeah, a trilobite. Yeah, yeah. like those, that too. It's um, definitely got the turtle shell from the top, but yeah, the mm-hmm. trilobite sort of profile with the oh, stuff coming those? to the sides, and then the man. How does well, Brandon and, come up with this? And the eye is very sort of reptilian very, as well. It's very pretty, yeah. It's It's got that sneaking up on a sleeping dragon, the eye opens, mm. and oh no, I'm looking into the abyss. Oh no. Yeah. To anyone, oh dear. But it's just, I mean, she gives a little perspective in the, in the bottom right corner too, where she shows how big it is compared to the boat. So that's mm-hmm. a big critter. Yeah, the thing that's really interesting about this is that it's just the eye, mm-hmm. which gives it that this feeling of enormity, this huge scale, which makes sense because again, this is based on one of Shalon's, you know, memories. Flash that she memory takes. things, yeah. And this is what she would have seen. Mm-hmm. So it, it's also the upper left portion of this image implies it only had the one eye. Is that? I think it's just the one side. I think this is just the one side. She can only okay. see it from this one side. It was just, it's bizarre because if you look at it from the, the top view, mm-hmm. the way it, this would imply that this eyes at the front. I don't see why that. It may. It or, may oh no. Have, okay. Like, there we the go. From the was... side. Okay. I had the angle wrong, but even still yeah. that puts it completely at the side. Well, I mm-hmm. mean, you think about horses and cows and things like that. They can't see right here, right directly in front of their nose. But and right directly behind them, but they can see like the whole range. That's there. that's the case of most um, prey animals, herb- yeah. herbivores. Herbivores, yeah. yeah. So it's it's just kind of an interesting thing, and so like that, and I mean we're predators because we have our eyes in the front, mm-hmm. so we can focus that way versus herbivores and other prey. Look around the everywhere, protect. Mm-hmm. Which and would imply that something eats them. Well, either that, either that, or that this is not a predator. It just yeah. it just descended from something that was not a predator, or it's it doesn't so need to worry about stinking it. Stinking big. <laughs> yeah, it's big. But the thing that's really cool about the artwork in these Stormlight books is just how much world building they do on their own. Mm-hmm. I really like this this style of storytelling. It's really interesting. If you follow Brandon's social media, he's been playing a lot of Elden Ring lately, mm-hmm. which a lot of people talk about how it doesn't really have a huge storyline, but what it does have is a lot of environmental storytelling. You know, he 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 clipped a picture of this chest that he came across, and there were a bunch of people bowing down around the chest. And he Mm -hmm. took some item out of the chest or anything, but it's just sort of there. Um, It, Mm -hmm. it reminds me also of, uh, of breath of the wild, you know, because there's just all sorts of ruins and stuff where if you look into it, there's a story there, but it's not explicitly given to you. You have to look and start to infer things for yourself. It's really a cool way of doing that. And Brandon has kind of, implemented that style of storytelling into the stormlight books Mm -hmm. um where it's a lot of show don't tell where he shows you a lot of stuff and there's if if you dig for it there's information to be found if not it's just a cool piece of art it's just pretty and you can just enjoy it as is yeah 
but because of that, it feels like when you get the story and you figure it out, you've earned it. <laughs> so, and I think well, especially it, with this one, since there's so many Shalon drawings, and a lot mm-hmm. of the book is spent with her figuring out what is going on with all of her drawings, that mm-hmm. it ties it in really well too. It's interesting. A lot of the environmental world building is actually done in this book rather than the first one, mm. because of Shalon's drawings. And I wonder if it's because it's her perspective more compared, like with background and stuff like that, her flashbacks compared to Kaladin, who is not as worried about that. Like he's, he's worth yeah. focused. I don't well, know. And then also this is, this is the book of her travels. Whereas in the first mm. book, she spent the entire time in Kerbronth. Well, most getting there, the time getting to Carbronth and being in Carbronth. One, yeah. One. The yeah. other thing that's interesting is there are a lot of notes from Nash in this, in the art oh, from this so one. Oh, so many, yeah. Like he, he has been a busy little guy in this <laughs> book specifically. Mm-hmm. Like he, sounds like a good segue. His, <laughs> his notes showed up in a bunch of different. And I love how he gripes about stuff pieces. too in later. Oh, ones. he he is he is such a whiny little punk. I love it. Awesome. I'm going to move on to the next one because that okay. this is a perfect segue. Yeah. So the next one is the bridge for tattoos and they mm-hmm. were recreated by Nash. And yep. it, it's really cool because it's a way of sort of breaking apart the tattoo and showing how it was designed, at least the way that Nash speculates it was designed, which, yeah. you know, he's a smart guy. We can be pretty confident that he's got it right. Mm-hmm. But it's there's always that chance that he's wrong. <laughs> It's it's kind of interesting. Like they left, you have to look really close at it, but they left some of their sketch lines, so you can see how they they use some of those lines underneath it, kind of as a base to get it symmetrical, mm-hmm. which is really kind of cool. Well, and this is so I I'm a big fan of logo design, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the the entire the artwork uh or not the artwork but the typography I guess is what you'd call it of the world of Roshar lends itself because everything has this artistic flair to it Mm -hmm. as long as you're not using the the phonetic script which is that the women's script or is that the women's script is phonetic yeah okay yeah Yeah. uh unless you're using that like it has all this art to it where it's it's all stylized and so you see this Mm -hmm. how all the pieces of this fit together to where it's like all right we have this part for freedom this part for bridge four this part for colon the the year is is uh worked in there it's very similar to kanji and in, in the way that uh, mm, there's all the a different lot of sections Eastern, and meanings. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the Southeast Asian uh, scripts, scripts yeah. work. And, and, you know, and it's clear, it's clear that we, we know that a lot of Roshar was taken from Asian influences mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. You know, Brandon spent two years in Korea and has yeah. a, 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 a lot of Asia, a lot of Middle East. Mm hmm. And yeah. then randomly South about... America thrown in with the Herdazians. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys know anything about um, Mongolian script or not? Because I don't know I anything don't. about it. I do not know a thing. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could say I did. But yeah, so Naj has his little gripe in here. He says, I had to spend hours watching Bridgman to sketch these stupid forehead <laughs> glyphs so you could have them, my friend. I'm pretty sure this is how they were designed. Mm. Naj. Yeah. I'm guessing the friend is Chris, but we don't have any confirmation. No, yeah, we don't know for sure. So, but I think it's no. a fair speculation considering she would want this kind of information. Oh, she yeah. wants, and she just sort of sends Naj out to do her, to do her bidding. exploring. Yeah. Well, and the thing I love about Naj complaining about this is he's a character with the exception of the one scene we get in Secret History. Mm-hmm. He's the one character we don't really have anything for. And so yeah. this is how we get his personality. And he sounds like an overworked desk jockey. He does. It's great. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because that one scene that we do get with him in Secret History, he seemed, at least from my perspective, from what, how I remember it, he was a little bit more jittery. Mm-hmm. and it, But in writing, he's a lot more snarky. He wasn't quite as snarky when dealing with Kelsier. He well, was yeah, more he also was worried about Kelsier trying to stab him in the back and things. Right. Too. So, well, there was also there's the baggage of Kelsier is a cognitive shadow at that point. He's from mm-hmm. Threnody and he's talking about there. There are rites that are supposed to be performed to get to this. And 
he's just showing up to it. You know, all of us who read, we're like, it's Kelsey or this is, that's the, that's what he does. He, he breaks um, and bends the rules. That's what he does. But at the same time, it's also, Naj is a nerd. Nerds in real life, they tend to be a lot more jittery and skittish, but you get them online in a chat room. They get, <laughs> exactly. they get snarky. And or, that's the oh, point I was making. Or, I mean, you get them in the right group at a at a convention, and it's just people who are all in their same fandom, and they just mm-hmm. they will not stop talking. And it's great. But there's sometimes that you're like, I, I love it too, but I really have to go to this place now. I'm sorry. And just as a reminder, this is uh, this is Isaac's sort of counterpart char- yeah. character insert into mm-hmm. the series. So, was this one of the pieces Isaac did as well? I don't remember. I do not recall. Unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to get uh, that it, I, done. Give me a second. I can. The uh, Copper Mind actually had it organized oh, by, by artist. artist. Which I yeah I can't. I we should have remembered that because I'm pretty sure they have the same person always doing Shalon sketches. I think that's Ben McSweeney. That's Ben McSweeney. Is it Ben McSweeney? Okay. But I don't remember who does Naja's stuff. Yeah. No, not words of rhythm. That's not a thing. (laughs) Rhythm is like the hardest word to spell. Like, oh. Rhythm of words. (laughs) All right. Looking it up. Yes, this was Isaac. Okay. Okay. So that's even more fitting that he's doing Mm -hmm. Naja's stuff. Very well. Okay. Yeah. So the next one we come across, there's not really a whole lot. It's it's a map of the Frostlands, which is where the ship was sunk, which is or not sunk but dissolved, I guess. Yes. <laughs> and, no, uh, no, it's sublimated. <laughs> Had issues. <laughs> didn't it become? Didn't it become air or did it become water? I can't remember. The bottom became water. I think mm-hmm. is what it was. So it was sunk. That's right. But only partly. Think, yeah, it, she, she well, technically, if it became water, didn't it melt? It went from solid to liquid. <laughs> oh, <sheesh. laughs> I, I mean, hate it when my ships science. melt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but we do get sort of a, a close look at the area around where the ship sunk, and mm-hmm. we see that Naj made, or Naj, I keep wanting to say Naj because that's how it reads in my mind, but I believe oh. it's pronounced Naj. Um, but we see that he makes special note of where Shalon came aground. Now, I think that that's because of a later piece that we'll come across because there was a piece there's a, later on, we come across a piece from Shalon's sketchbook. That's waterlogged. Oh, that's right. And, he's and he says, oh. he says, you owe me a new coat. <laughs> you know, it took me a lot to, you have no idea what get... I went through to recover this from the bottom of the Rochard ocean. You owe me a new coat. <laughs> exactly. And so I, it makes sense why that note would be there because he's like, this is perhaps he had to go away and come back later for it. So he made a note. This is where it was. Mm-hmm. You know, this may be his X marks the spot. Yeah. So we don't know. I, we don't know. 100%. I, mean, I want to know the story of him getting this. He's like, you don't know what I went through. It's like, I don't tell me more. I want to know. I will I want, listen. Gripe at uh, me, please. I want Isaac to write it. <laughs> true but okay i i looked and i could not find anywhere you know someone somewhere has translated all this uh all this script yeah is that all this oh script? is there a script around it well so there, if yeah, you look there's lines there's all these around. lines that are very uh very, very alethi yeah and it's i mean there's some up like by some rivers there's one by like a, f- a, a fortress building, a fortress mm something by the top and there's like symbols along the bottom too and i don't know if those are numbers or if they're just designs yeah so. it's, well, it's one of these things that uh, what i love about putting them here even though we can't see them one there's the the detective work that the community loves to do regardless mm-hmm. but uh the other thing is just the i love how this implies he took this map locally and then he's making his own notes. Like it adds mm-hmm. to the, it's again, this yeah. is world building. This is showing mm-hmm. Naj doesn't just do this all by hand. If he doesn't have to, he's resourceful. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't waste time duplicating what he doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. I just realized something interesting. Hmm. Shalon's notebooks. We can read all the notes. Navani's notebook. It's all written in the women's script. I don't know. I just find it interesting that that distinction is there. Is there that everything from Navani, you have to dig through it to find out what's being said versus Shalon's is just legible. Like I suspect, like I, 
I'm, I'm guessing that there's not an in-world you know, actual distinction, but it's, I just find it interesting that it is differentiated that way. My my guess is it's probably because they're they're guessing that people who really want to know and are willing to dig in and learn the women's script are going to do it for Navani's stuff. But Shalon's stuff is much more baseline essential that you you need to know what those say versus and, and, Navani's and, is an extra, extra really right. cool flavor. I, I don't think it's necessarily that they're more likely to do it um, for Navani stuff. But I think what what you said at the end, uh, the stuff that's in Shalons is more intended for world building. And so it's, yeah. it's translated for us. Yeah. Navani's is, I don't want to say Easter eggs, but it's, it's I, I, no, I think stuff. Easter eggs is the perfect Easter word. eggs is a good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because her, well, cause like if I remember correctly in Oathbringer, or there was all sorts of stuff that was hinting at mm. how Fabrials worked that we wouldn't actually get mm. in story until the next book. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so I think it's sort of things that Brandon doesn't want us focusing on. He mm-hmm. can put in the win- women's script, but things he does want us to know, he can yeah, have Shalon do there, it yeah. and we can get it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He gets to have his cake and eat it. <laughs> his chill cake. Anyway, um, next. Okay, so nice. moving on to the next one. 218. Which is the scroll oh. of stances. Oh, this is where, oh, this is, I love his little like gripe too on the bottom mm-hmm. here that Nash has. Yeah, so this this is showing a lot of the different stances in fighting, you know, because we hear a lot about these things through mm-hmm. Adolin's duels. And particularly in this book where there is the duel. That's the right. stances are very important, you know, finding oh, yes. out about stone stance and smoke stance and and wind, wind stance and yeah, wind stance. and vine stance and all the other all the different things. And it Six so this stance. gives us sort of a visual reference for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then of course Naj, you know, says this was an excerpt from a longer scroll. The bottom half was eaten by an axe hound as I fled from the place where I'd stolen this. <laughs> the dog ate my homework right there. Yeah, really like that is the more complicated version of it. Mm-hmm. I just, I want to see Naja's adventures because he clearly gets into all sorts of ridiculous romps. And it sounds <laughs> fun. Oh, well, Brandon has said that uh, Isaac is going to be writing in the Cosmere. Yeah. So who, I like, I don't know what we're going to have as far as that goes, but. But we'll take what we can get because yeah. we're forward to it. Plus, we like Isaac mm-hmm. and Isaac's mother. <laughs> she was she was trying to call us. She was. She wanted to be on the show. <laughs> and Isaac's mother, if you want on, let us know. Oh, we man. will. We would love to interview you on the show, Isaac's mom. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Boy. But the, so the other thing I like about this, um, the art style of this looks like a more refined version of sort of medieval art. It does. Yeah. Yes. And so cause that the problem with medieval art is they hadn't yet developed the idea of perspective. Or and so you cats. get things like people being as tall as the, the castles and such. So yeah. this, this does fine with the perspective here, but I think it helps that there's only the people and the swords. There's yeah. Not background stuff, but even still like just the proportions are mm-hmm. fine as well. Um, cause you know, they weren't rediscovering art the way the medieval Europeans had to, mm-hmm. um, but it's just interesting. And I don't know what all these symbols are. I'm assuming it's, it's, yeah, it's what the stances are. I'm mm-hmm. guessing. Yeah. But I, we didn't, but I don't, some definitely something's going down at the bottom as someone's literally getting impaled. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a great action shot there. So I wonder if this is like a whole, if this is like step one, step two, step three, step four of the same stance. Could be. Or if it's, or if it's different stances, because it looks like they're following through with the movement and the guy on the right does not fare well. I'm sure some uh, listener who knows more than we do would love to write in and let us know. Yes. If you know, please let us know. We would love to hear. Yeah. Cause I, I was looking for some of these and I couldn't find the problem is the information I know it's out there. The problem is you have to go through the forums to mm. to figure it out and the forums are an arcane place. <laughs> I don't think I have 
Yeah, I don't have a login for it like at all. Yeah. I know I get sucked in and that scares me. All right, Jordan, you ready to move to the next piece? Oh, yeah. 45. Everyone's favorite fractal oh, impossibility. We have Shalon's notes on pattern. And as I said, this is the piece that I was talking about where it's partly waterlogged. Mm-hmm. And so we only get parts of, of Shalon's notes on pattern, um, but we also get Naj's little Great. indication at the bottom <laughs> that mm-hmm. that uh, he had gone down to the bottom of the Rasharan Ocean to retrieve this, mm-hmm. um, which actually, in all honesty, I'm impressed that we got what we did. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that only this that little big, section was smudged. That big pattern, the top pattern, like, that's really detailed and crazy. And, like, only the very edge got smudged a little bit mm-hmm. on that one. But, again, this piece does so much to spark the imagination and get your mm-hmm. whole thoughts on the world of Roshar going. Because not only does it tell you about pattern, it also tells you, you know, this is what the pattern of the uh, of the paper looked like. This is sort of how Shalon kept her notes. It gives you sort of a look into to her personality mm-hmm. because she's taking these notes and this is how she kept notes. And, and these are the notes she found important to keep. It, it, it really does more than just give you an info dump on pattern. And I like, I like how they, she has her own little font kind of, and mm-hmm. she has little like curly cute. They're not, I don't know if the curly cute is the right word, but like, her Y's and her G's like circle up and do little swirly things. And I remember being mm-hmm. a teenage girl yeah. and like trying to do cutesy stuff with my I, I would love Shalon font to use for mm-hmm. uh, art projects. A It'd Shalant? So <laughs> As it were. As it were. As it were. Anyway, but it's, it's just nice to see those little things like that. And, and she has like underlines for her notes to keep them straight. Mm. Well, and this this is really cool because this is around the time we first get introduced to pattern mm-hmm. you know this is when pattern is just this weird little thing that's moving around um imbecilic i think was the yeah. was the descriptor that she used because he would like flop around and just like wee everywhere well, and he'd try and like climb up the wall and then fall down <laughs> mm-hmm. poor you're little doing pattern. great pattern you're doing great just keep it up but it did a very good job of endearing him to us very quickly. Mm-hmm. It just, it, it sparks those protective feelings of, oh, he's cute and he's helpless and I love him. I will <laughs> name him George. And I will name him George. Well, he's named a pattern, just like everyone else. I know, but it's great. And again, it gives us that sort of look into... Um, you know, the constant changingness of him. You know, we see these very distinct patterns, but all of them are very different, but all of them are here or him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she says the divisions of the pattern vary, but appear to be consistently even. It never looks chaotic. There's always a pattern to the shapes. And this does such a good job of illustrating that. Well, the other mm-hmm. thing, there's something with rhythm of war now in uh, the background, one line and it's, smudged out we get almost dot 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 uh or sorry i am almost certain dot 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 have seen this dot 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 somewhere before dot 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 oh. mm-hmm. it shares some resemblance dot 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 i observed dot 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 and to the like, symbol oh. heads to the things that attacked her or not attacked her but mm. she thought were attacking her yeah it's freaked her out real yeah good. when she soul cast the the goblet into blood mm. Which was a fun time. Oh yes. <laughs> Trauma. It's a special time in a in a young person's life when you first soul cast a goblet into blood. <laughs> All right. All right. Next moving one. on oh, to. Uh, so we've been looking at Shalon's notes. Now it's time for Adolin's notes. <laughs> <laughs> because these are th- this is the first of the folio pages. There are a lot of these that will show up later in uh, in Rhythm of War. Which give us a different kind. Oh, yeah. These are great for the cosplayers. I know. I need to use them more, but I just haven't done it yet. But it's really nice for that. You're like, yes, yes, please give me outfits. Show me some. This gives us a look at the Alethi and at the Alethi fashion. Because Mm -hmm. the Alethi model, it's called out. This is an Alethi male. This is what Mm -hmm. an Alethi male would look like. Um, 
because this folio was made for sale in Alethkar and Yakavet and those regions of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and it's just, again, world building. It shows the, uh, the uniform style of fashion, you know, the cloaks and the, the straight shoulders and the The high collars, the the high collars, high stiff collars. And Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll note this guy uh, must be really cool because he's got double uh, popped collars. He does. Yeah, he's got like a little like shoulder thing, like with his, either with his cloak or something. Because he's got like Man, his jacket, he, and then he's got something over that. If he was walking down the street in the '90s, he would be like the Ooh. guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's cool. He's just not three popped collars <laughs> cool. But yeah. Um, again. World building is just really cool in this. Um, it gives us a look at the, you know, you've got those, the, the, just the, the stern face. This is what, this is the sort of model that they're trying to mm-hmm. promote. This is what will sell clothes in Aleph car. It makes me think of Abercrombie and Fitch and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway. Well, no, no, it's on the show. So it's Abercrombie and stick. <laughs> Just gonna get rid of the picture here, so everyone can see me grinning, and then we'll. Aladar right Crombie. Oh man, Aladar Crombie. And I'm glad I can I can set stick. you up there for that nice assist. I'm good for that. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Back. Okay, we're going back to Shalon's Shalon. notebook. Some plants. So this is, this is one of the things you know because they keep moving along, and every so often she stops the caravan. She's like, "Wait, stop! I gotta go take draw these plants." And annoying everybody around her. Oh, yeah. Because, again, this is who Shalon is. She's like, I have to draw this. And that's what we're doing. Boots. Boots. Give me boots. And, again, the art is awesome. And it, the world of Roshar is so alien so compared alien. to most epic fantasy. You know, and you see this and you see the, the way these plants grow and are drawn and again brandon has said a lot of this was inspired by tide pools yeah and the more and you can more like them. absolutely see it yeah in in this art yeah it, it looks like you're in an underwater area in a video game and the water texture forgot to load <laughs> i could see that yeah well the other thing that's really interesting about it is because brandon thinks about the way everything works you can see, especially like in the top frame, how everything's shaped by the storms. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you see that all this plant life has sprung up here because this area is shielded Mm -hmm. by this rock formation. And so it grows this small jungle where it can. And and the rock formation itself, you know, it, it, and the, the crim formations around it have been formed by the storm as well, because there are, are spikes up along the edge of crim buildup but they point in the direction that the wind is blowing them. Mm-hmm. And so the, you know, the crim lands and then the wind pushes it. And then after the wind subsides, the crim hardens. And then over years and decades and centuries of this buildup, you have these really interesting formations that come. Mm-hmm. Like and so as they build up it's vertical, but sideways. from, if you look at this picture, it kind of creates that wind break that the, plants can grow Mm -hmm. behind a little late i think is what they call it l-a-i-t yes i like the way that shalon describes it she says uh many of these species are new to me the plant life here isn't nearly as lush as it was on father's estates or even carbranth but there is a frantic determination to the way it grows remember we're moving farther east from where shalon grew up and so it's closer into the storm and you end up with these plants that are somehow able to survive outside in high storms. Mm-hmm. Take have it rougher. Everything's. I mean, that's it's. Uh, when I mean, you see this like in any any area that's windy. Like I, I'll never forget. Like uh, remember in elementary school they showed like this documentary on life living. Uh, it was like at the very tip of South America where they just like they get these howling. I don't remember the, the name, but maybe 
but uh, just like all the trees, you see them all sideways. Mm -hmm. And just as if they've been frozen permanently by the wind itself. It was really cool looking. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 amazing the way that life. I did not mean to quote Ian Malcolm, but how life finds a way. Come on. I didn't there. mean to. It just <laughs> happened. It's Don't we quote. always mean to quote Ian Malcolm? <laughs> yes. Life finds a way. You have to have like that random pause in there. It's important. Yeah. All right. So moving on to Navani's notebook again. Da, da, da. Now this one is kind of cool because it leads into something that we will see later. Yes. Because the floating bridge. Exactly. So th- this is the, the floating pr- platforms that they're fiddling around with and for archers, yeah. You know, they're they're archer platforms, which is a great military application. You know, suddenly you have these elevated platforms that cannot be toppled. Mm-hmm. I mean they, they could technically be toppled if they found the fabrial that was holding them up. The but, conjoiners. But it's yeah. possible, you know, you can have them far away from each other. Mm-hmm. And, well, and it's it's just it's it's instant uh it's instant obi-wan you suddenly have the high I ground, have the high ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. but it can't be toppled and it can't be climbed yeah well and then on top of it just the fact that you can just like imagine a team just moving this up and then they you know shoot, shoot up some sort of flare some sort of signal and then just it just rises above and suddenly you just have this turret of archers that can that can go as long as they have arrows. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is, as awesome as this is, it almost instantly becomes unnecessary in a world where you have uh, wind runners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And skybreakers. Yeah. But, but it at least gives them the opportunity to, you know, not be so far behind. Yeah. You yeah. Know, this this is the, the space sword for Sokka. In the Avatar universe, yes. universe, because he doesn't have the special abilities, he still has his space sword. Yes. And so, I love Saga. He's awesome. Well, this, but now, obviously, with the sibling now around, who knows what's going to be going on with these types of fabrials? But yeah, like I could definitely see this, like in the future. Uh, like just think of cranes, and think of. Uh, just just window washers Mm -hmm. oh man like you could start building things very vertically if you have uh, these types of things that you can use as a an adjustable scaffolding Mm -hmm. oh my goodness yeah it doesn't have to go all the way down it just you can just attach it at point wherever you want well and it again it gives us a look into who navani is because we're seeing these sketches and speculations because this hadn't fully been designed. She was helping to to figure it out. And then below you see the soldiers in the weeping and there's a fabrial to help dry the bowstrings. And this, this is who Navani is. She sees these practical applications. <laughs> well, and it, it's one of these things that you have to have the, uh, the idea guy um, in any like good uh, or like create creation team. And, mm-hmm. Navani lets other people figure out the smaller details mm-hmm. that she doesn't have as much time usually to, to figure it out. That's why she assembles a good team around her, mm-hmm. a very detail oriented people, but she's the one coming up with, eh, could be Jerry make something like this, or I don't know, maybe cool. this. And then she sets it to people who are going to be able to test her theory. And she, she has that. She has a good enough, though, working knowledge of what she's talking about that yeah. she's able to do this rather than just, you know, it rather than, for example, someone like Dallin are coming in and just saying, hey, can we do this? Sure, boss. She, she knows. Oh, yeah. They, like she understands the working theory. She's like, OK, I don't know how to get how we get from we've gotten from point A to point B to point C. I don't know how do we get from point C to point D, but there's definitely a path there. Can you? Can y'all work on this and find me that path? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and it also she's the uh, she's also the jack of all trades when it comes to knowledge. I think a lot of it due to the fact that she has been the queen for so long, and she she was a queen during a time of extreme warfare. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. she's very familiar with warfare, whereas I think a lot of the Artifabrians, they wouldn't even think to come up with a floating, you know, archery platform because they don't mm-hmm. know enough about war to think of the application. They wouldn't come up with a heating fabriel to dry, draw dry bowstrings because they don't deal with bowstrings. They don't realize that during more muggy times that bows become harder to use. Well, yeah. it's sort of like, Amy, what is something that your kids are really into? Minecraft. You probably know a lot more about Minecraft than somebody without kids who doesn't play themselves, correct? Probably. Just yeah. because your kids talk about it. Yes. though I And so I, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that you'll pick up <laughs> through osmosis. Mm-hmm. Like what was it? My, my daughter was trying on some clothes. And so I was sitting outside with my son and... I had picked a shirt that had like all of these Minecraft critters on it. And there was like 70% I knew what they were. And I spent the rest of the time going, oh, what's that one? And he'd be like, that mm-hmm. is this thing. And I'm like, oh, I'd heard you talking about it, but I didn't know what it looked like. And so I've yeah. got I've got a cursory knowledge of a lot of it. But there's there's some details that I'm like, I don't know how you make the thing X, Y, or Z because mm-hmm. I don't get into that at all. Or, or something that Josh is into that mm-hmm. you you know more about than other people would just because you absorb it through osmosis because it's just josh it's is talking there. about it yeah um Miniature and figurines <laughs> yeah warhammer <laughs> and programming probably uh-huh. that. so in in the same <laughs> sense navani you know she has been she was married to gavilar for for years and now she's around dalinar all the time the things that are important to the people who are important to you also become important to you you understand that you now it may not be to the same degree as that person, but you do start to take note. And well, that's yeah. sort of what's gone on with Navani here. Yeah. Well, and especially given the fact that, Nav- I mean, Navani talks about when her Gavilar, uh, ELA and Sadius would, uh, Get all be sitting around. around pl- yeah. They'd be scheming. Well, you know, if you're going to be scheming in the middle of a war, you got, you, you best know what about mm-hmm. war. Mm-hmm. Which is why I, I think I dare say that, uh, you know, like Sadius and Gavilar seem to be more uh, savvy politically than a lot of their counterparts, probably because they were having those same meetings with ELA and Navani. Mm-hmm. In a similar note, for example, with our podcast, you know, we've got we're, we're obsessed with the Cosmere and stuff like that. Amy, you've got a cosplaying angle. You had a cosplaying angle before we ever Mm -hmm. started you know having the podcast yeah and suddenly you've been putting together cosplays of cosmere characters because you're taking what you already have and you already enjoy and applying it directly to this other thing that we are we're all talking about and that's an angle that jordan and i would never have yeah and i mean i because like you guys probably look at the folio picture go oh it looks cool whereas i'm like oh that's what that thing Mm -hmm. looks like and that's how you would construct it has a side (laughs) angle (laughs) Well, You've got and, the back view. Oh my goodness. Well, anyway. and like my, th- my thing is board games and I've, you know, I'm Brandon's team likes board games. And so they're putting, you know, they're licensing out board games to the, all these things. And so I'm able to look in and appreciate and play with and figure out how to utilize those things. It's just, it's a, it, it's, that's the way uh-huh. people work. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. No, that's not the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Jordan. <laughs> How we move to the oh, next one? Gonna, yeah, let's move on. It's going to be in my head. And we're moving to back to another of Shalon's sketches. Sigh. So, and and this Ooh. applies to a scene, you know, to a couple of scenes that we see in the book where uh, we see um, Renarin training. Yeah. And Shalon going to the the training yards and adeline showing off for her and but but she's like you know she's drawing all the you know all the different shard plate and the shard blades and and he's like hey don't you want to see mine she's like no no yours has been drawn a lot and he's like but 
picked what I wanted to have me do. And then she does have a little picture, and I'm guessing it's his face with the mask up, and it says "sigh" underneath yeah, it. it. And I'm can, like, that's oh, that, there's tell. that 100% his face. Oh, well, well, yeah, it's, that's him. You you can tell because if you uh, look just below it, you see that that's the same faceplate, and you see the sword, and that's oh, Maya yeah. Lauren because you can see yes. the uh, rock formations that are mm-hmm. at the base. That's right. Which yeah. we saw a lot of at Dragon Steel Mini Con because oh. there was a mm-hmm. uh, what was it Forged Foam. foam? Yes, forged yeah, foam. Yeah, they were selling the uh, foam versions of that sword, so we saw that all around. And a reminder: uh, mm-hmm. we're going to be at the next Dragon Steel Mini Con, <laughs> so if you want to meet us, you definitely should show up. This advertisement brought to you by Dragon Steel Mini Con. <laughs> wow. So actually, no, happened. they they didn't fund that. Anyway, <clears throat> no. I mean, technically, they're, if they're 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 technically funding us being there, it's... we're getting a free... <laughs> we're getting a Brandon's boot, feeding so, yeah. us. <laughs> Hopefully there will be ribs again. I'm really hopeful for the return of ribs. But I, the thing I that's cool. Trout. That's what I want. Anyway, the thing that's cool, though, is just the diversity in the designs of the mm-hmm. of the shard blades. You They're know, because really we different. see, you know, we see Gavilar's um, weapon. Firestorm. Firestorm. Which has like see, flame thing going on on the side of that one. That one's cool. And we see Sun Razors, which is Elicar's blade. Now, is that the one that's the Sunmaker's blade, or no? That's I, I can't uh, remember. that. That's uh, was Gavilar's. That was Firestorm. No, that's that was that. Da- Dalinar's. Oathbringer is the is that's right. That's right. Mm, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, because I was because Gavilar sees it and he's like, "Dang!" You know, just sort of like slow clapping for Dalinar, just being like, oh, "Okay, yeah. that's that's pretty tight." Mm-hmm. But I just love the variety of shard blades because, you know, you see this two handed long sword um, that uh, that is a uh, sun razor. And then you see Mylarin, which is a one bladed um, mega katana for for lack of a better term. <laughs> it's well, just, and, it's, and, and then whatever the one on the bottom right is that that beast slayer thing with the hook oh, on with the like back. the hook oh yeah well and so that's something that we we only see a little bit of it from adolin's perspective but the shape of the blade changes how you would fight someone so you mm-hmm. have all these stances that are standardized but these swords are all completely different like you look at elicar's blade which is much more akin to what we would think of as a traditional blade as far as its shape and look minus the part where it's bigger than him i would i would think that would be a, a bastard sword maybe mm-hmm. yeah and so it's, you it's look cute. at it and so you're like, OK, I, like I would think Elicar's blade is sort of like something you could apply to every stance and there's going to be no difference because it's sort of the standard blade. But something like Adolin's where he has this weird wave to it, like that's mm-hmm. going to affect like when the two blades clash, the type of leverage he can get, how much weight mm-hmm. he can put where. And mm-hmm. this is where someone who is really understanding of a duel can change up his strategy because like the the guy he's fighting with hooks and then like at the base there's these notches that your sword could get caught in you have to yeah. fight him different this is also one of the reasons though that i really do hope that aelin ends up becoming an edge dancer because suddenly aelin has a weapon that can change forms I know. as he does it'd be really cool i also still i i kind of still like him being a non you know night radiant too being kind of like the soccer, I, but not as much the comedic thing. In the I group. understand the uh, the appeal, but I I still think that it's gonna oh, happen. I, th- I, I think it's gotta happen because what either with that Maya? or yeah. Well, because <laughs> uh, well, what happened with Maya? Absolutely, and but also the uh, you know suddenly Adolin starts becoming less and less relevant as everyone around mm. him becomes super powered. Yeah. You know, if if you're looking at it from the um, the Palladium style of uh, RPG, you're going from normal damage to mega damage. Yeah. So I just think that whatever Adolin's doing isn't the same as everyone else. So I, oh, I just that's a, also Edge true. Dancer makes no sense as far as the oaths go. I disagree. I but completely the, disagree. But the uh, the just he he's got a bond with this sword. Like it's just. What what is like? What does it do when you approach a bond from a completely different angle? 
And that's what I wonder. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have his brother who's from a completely different (laughs) issue. No, I, 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 I think that the oaths apply perfectly to Adolin. I mean, he's remembering Maya, those who have been forgotten. Yeah, but I think that's to me, it's that's more a general thing. And that was specific to Maya. And I want like I wonder if that type of focus can change it. But we don't really understand why these bonds happen. So I agree with you that things are coming about in a very different way for Adolin and which could lead to something very different. But I think Edge Dancer is still at the very root of it. Now, I, I don't think it's going to to manifest the same way that lift has mm-hmm. but oh, no one will dancer. manifest the way lift did <laughs> lift is their own special thing so but i i do think that adolin fits very well as an edge dancer plus then you have both colin boys being healers mm-hmm. which i kind of like i also like how that this is a cosplayer and girl again like she has drawings of how the different parts of the arm move like the boots mm-hmm. and like gauntlets and stuff like that and it's like oh that's really cool that it you shows that that you can and i'm sure this would help lots of cosplayers construct these things but yeah yes. shard plate is a lot and um, probably has helped them because oh, there are probably have done shard plate and yeah. i'm like man props to you that's that's dedication i'm that trying i'm trying to remember yet. where i saw it someone was interviewing isaac and isaac mm-hmm. was talking about how at first they were looking at like trying to look at armor but then they realized that wasn't what they should be looking at because no armor would ever be designed the way this Shark is. And they started looking at beetles mm-hmm. oh. and, and, and other bugs and how their plates carapace. Yeah. Because yeah. they're, because these are naturally occurring, uh, mm. you know, things. Yeah. And once they started, you know, trying to fit that over a human form, then they started doing the more armor that pieces. That is really cool. Yeah, because I mean, it, it kind of it feels like a fusion of like beetles, like you're saying. Now that I'm seeing that, as well as like samurai armor, just with like yeah. the shapes of some of them. Does that make Adolin the blue beetle? <laughs> I don't wear a hat currently, but I would take it if I did. Oh man, here we go. All right, all right. So speaking of folios, Amy, let's move on to the next piece of art this is the azish Six folio so the azish public servant design again we have a note from naj he says this folio page shows contemporary designs of the azir using local models though these are specifically male civil servant outfits the styles have deeply influenced all azish fashion which makes sense because of the bureaucracy structure oh, yeah. of of azir everything is bureaucracy there and it's really cool to see like the different versions they have if there's variations on it they all have some similar themes with the v's which i find very interesting because that's also kind of reminiscent of the uh i'm blanking Sazed. on what they're called on of Sazed. like you know he, he has the the what the, 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 the v patterns mm-hmm. i'm blanking at terrace the terrace Terraces. yeah why could i not remember that <laughs> well the other what thing that's hard? interesting about it just you know obviously it evokes a lot of uh i'd say like middle eastern Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm remembering from, gosh, this is Age of Empires to the Janissary unit that the I think it was the Turks had, um, with the very that. square hats, mm-hmm. um, and it just I don't it, it fits the Azish as far as their sort of their cultural, the cultural beats they're going for stylistically. Well, and it's not just the square hats, but it's it's the hats with that drape that goes down and protects yeah. the neck from the sun. That makes me think of the French yeah. Legion a little bit too, which they probably bit. got Ooh, from yeah. the locals. Yes, that's definitely an adaptation. Mm-hmm. But but that's no. where my brain goes is French Legion. Not that I but know again, about it. But, but again, it okay. gives us sort of a context to think of when they go to, um, to to this region and. For, for both the people and the culture. And it just, again, gives you that extra color. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. that template. Well, the other thing I find interesting in this book is the two styles we get, the Alethi and the Asius are going to be the most rigid of the, uh, the fashions in, in both a uh, cultural and literal sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both of them have very square looks to themselves. Mm. Are, are there, um, Oh goodness. Thalen. 
Folio isn't here. I can't remember. No, that was in uh, oh, oh, that's the other one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which and that was very flowing and and we got yeah. to see the eyebrows. And... Yes, and yeah, that bothered me thing. still. Oh, my goodness. I still, still got to figure out how to do that if I'm ever going to do Risen. Ugh, but that scares me. Give up. No. Hmm. I oh, bought okay. grass Good for counterpoint. It. You bought grass for I it. bought Ikea, like their little dollar Ikea like pot of grass that I was going to use for that. <laughs> You're like, I have to make this costume. I already spent a dollar. I spent a dollar on it. So- <laughs> I must. Yeah. Eventually. Someday I'll do it. Future episode where we talk about sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> Cosplayers, you the Sandersonian Institute of Financial Studies. No, but um, yeah. So let's move on to Shalon's next sketch. Mm-hmm. All right. So I kind of walking. love Shalon's notes in this one because she refers to <laughs> brightness axe face. <laughs> I know, it's and like you can little, tell like, she does friendly. not like these propriety lessons. And this is how a woman walks. A proper foreign lady walks with her safe hand covered by her free hand, both held before her. She steps with underlined poise and underlined deliberation. Head up, back Head. straight. Oh, man. Feet level with the floor. She, she does, does not swing her arms or raise her toes like a common dark eyes at a farm dance. She does not oh. slouch. And it's got a little Kremlin with like a demon lady face on it. And it's awesome. I love it. I imagine um, if you've ever seen the movie, the original movie of the Music Man, I imagine the mayor's wife, like in her, you know, the people sitting around eating sandwiches. It's a smutty book. <laughs> I just, I, I imagine Brightness Axe Face basically being her. Oh man, it's a smutty notebook. But it, it was. It is interesting seeing like all the different poses and like. Well, and you see and, like, Vale wait. in there. Yeah, you see how she's walking and everything else too, which I don't. Really she's see she's, that she's moving her hands. Horses. You notice? Oh yeah, those hands are free move, free moving. The safe hand is not covered. Well, and but again, it, this is this is sort of the emergence, though, of Vale. Yeah, mm-hmm. which, but if you remember, she has to draw these things because this is how she gets the images in her head, and so she mm-hmm. needs to be drawing. What does Vale look like as she moves? O- almost like animating a three D character. You need mm-hmm. all steps of the movement because otherwise you're going to get you're going to get clipping you're going to get i I love the idea now of if she doesn't get it quite right you see like the the coat just get caught on things and stretch out (laughs) in unnatural (laughs) ways Oh man! but yeah this is the emergence of both a veil and radiant because radiant moves like the lady that she that shalom was always taught to be and veil is basically when she wants to be the opposite and Shalana's somewhere awkwardly in the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. moving on. It's the mosaic. Where is the map? Map of Stormseat. So if you remember, Stormseat is where the they found the uh, Oath Gate in the Shattered Plains. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, sorry, this is the mosaic. I have this out of order. My apologies. No, that's that's the one. That's the oh, it was okay. Yeah, it is a mosaic. Yeah, it's a mosaic map. Gotcha. And you have a note from Nash at the bottom. It says reproduction of a mosaic purportedly illustrating the city of Stormsteep. So this is again that part in the center of the shattered plains. This one looks a lot more medievalish to me, just like in how the buildings are constructed or they're they're drawn. Yeah. you know, with the mosaic. Mm-hmm. No, it, part of it, me wonders like where they got the idea to, you know, because I wonder how do they choose which art pieces to put in? Um, you know, sometimes I think it's just Isaac saying, I want to try cool. this. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's got to be some of that mm-hmm. um, just because they're, they're going to be having meetings being like, OK, what art do we want to put in? What styles do we want to put in? And then figuring out like. If there's like, ooh, I think a mosaic style would be really good somewhere because mm-hmm. this would be up. It's, oh, yeah, that'd be good. What do we mm-hmm. want to do with it? Do, do we want to do something cool? Like maybe do the white spine as a mosaic because you could see where all those ooh. plates might look good. Oh, that would mm-hmm. look and then, cool. And then Isaac says, wow, that'd be really stylistic. Let's do a map instead because that sounds like a <laughs> lot doable. more doable. Let's do a map of Storm Seat. Yeah, that'd be great. I can see Brandon. Oh, but th- I think that white spine idea is really good. No, we are going to want the map. <laughs> 
Allah. Yeah, so th- this is where the Oath Gate is. It's also, I believe, where the uh, where the Listener City was, isn't it? Yeah. Where all they, of they right Eshenai's there. and Vinley's stories were going on, where where Vinley was going back to her her mother, or Vinley was plotting, I guess, and Eshenai was going back to her mother. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. Yeah, that is. Because they built on it. Mm-hmm. And so this is sort of what the original city that the listeners moved into and then adapted. developed, adapted to themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I'm guessing that's the oath gate in the middle. Yeah. That would seem like it. Either that or the platform. I'm not sure which. Because there's a platform there, there's down a, to the yeah, left of the thing with like a little shaft sticking up. So I don't know, but that seems really far away. I don't remember it being that far. I don't remember them having an oath gate at Stormseat. That's so how they got to Eurythira in the first place. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I don't remember the how them having that where they grew up is what I meant. No, it's not where they grew up. They moved into Stormseat after they met with the Alethi. Oh, okay. Because they had I this, they had the they had all the small different um, little tribes and stuff tribes and then after the assassination of king gavilar they all kind of congregated in storm seat mm-hmm. for safety and everything like that. that's right okay moving on all right seven seven one so this one just comes from a text apparently like a, a modern text but sort of a, an agricultural text <laughs> a farmer's guide Kind of. mm-hmm. talking about growing your just own a horse <laughs> I, think of, I think of them more as cows yeah, yeah. yeah they're more like, they're like more oxen like steer, the, but the problem they, they yeah. use them also as like a, as you would a plow horse mm-hmm. or an ox yeah but yeah this one's done by Isaac as well mm-hmm. okay and this Wait. is one of the more again. It's a, it's interesting just seeing the varying art styles. Oh, yeah. Like is when I first that? saw this, I thought this was another one by uh, Dan De Santos or Dos, Dos Santos. Dos Dan Santos. Dos, Dos Santos. Yeah, Dos Santos. Who he did yeah. the uh, the folios. Um, mm-hmm. And so when I saw the style, I thought like, oh, because it's the hyper realistic. I thought this was uh, I thought this was another by him, but Isaac did this one. Yeah, uh, Dan also did the cover of Warbreaker. Mm-hmm. but um yeah i just it, it, again it, world building it says to encourage pupation for the of the mature larva feed them a consistent diet of rock lily leaves to discourage pupation of your adult chills add drops of shale bark oil to the drinking water and feed chills crushed shell tick before a storm sheltering your livestock during a high storm remains the most proven method to keep your chills from pupating which i find very interesting that they have these two pupation stages and they want to encourage the first one, but they want to delay the second because this middle phase is where they're useful as these beasts of burden. Mm -hmm. What happens if they get bigger? I don't really know what happens. Yeah. Like this, this, this made me, cause I completely forgotten about this drawing and it made me realize I don't know what happens in the third stage. But it I says spe- senescence is the fifth stage, which the definition is the condition or process of deterioration with age. So loss of a cell's power of division and growth. So it's sort of, I don't know why they would move into that stage. So I know with lobsters, lobsters technically can live forever. The right. problem is every time they shed, they get bigger and they eventually get to a size where they just die mm-hmm. due to they Wait. their yeah their their heart just can't pump enough can't blood take it anymore yeah and so I'm wondering if they're taking a page out of that and sort of uh, taking the idea that they pupate during uh, high storms as a defense, but they get bigger and eventually they die off. That's mm-hmm. possible. And so, but I, I don't don't quote me on that as uh, can yeah, I'm not sure about that for certain. Yeah. <laughs> We're not chill experts. But that would be a really... My goodness, I keep thinking of costume ideas and I don't have the skill to do a lot of them because now I want to have one where somebody's sitting, sitting, quote unquote, on a chill. 
<laughs> and riding it around. That would be crazy. So if someone wants to do that, that would be or awesome. You, or you could cosplay as a child and have one of your kids ride around. No. <laughs> oh, man. That would be... All I'm hearing are really good ideas. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next chill on sketchbook. All right. Chasm life. This one is weird. What do you mean? Just 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 plants. It's it's, hanging out. So because of the cat the way the chasm shaped and Mm -hmm. the way all these plants look. It reminds me being inside of a beast. Like mm. almost like this is like almost like the plants are almost like a, a an intestinal lining. Oh, like all the little like finger things going on. Yeah. And so it just in given how deep it goes down and the amount of danger you're in, it kind of does feel like being in the belly of a beast. It makes me think a little bit like of um in Star Wars when they're inside that that rock and then they're inside like the worm kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It also makes me think of like, um, some plants in Hawaii when I was there that have like these really long root systems that stretch out because the water is over there, but the plant is over here and they will reach out and like grow on top of trees and other things like that. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And just with the chasms, you know, repeatedly filling up with water during the high storms and becoming mm-hmm. these raging rivers and then draining out. You have this weird hybrid mm-hmm. environment. Oh yeah. Where it's dry. It, or it, sorry, the, the top part is dry and, and you know, the heat is beating down, but down below it never really fully dries. Mm hmm. It's very muggy. They need to get rice down there. (laughs) That'd be a lot of rice. Look, where there's a will, there's a way. I don't think I'd want to eat it either, considering where all that water's been. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Well, and then what was the... Let's see. Where is that? I had the text up. There's something on this I liked. The fact that the vines appear incredibly elastic. Yes. <laughs> like when they withdrawn, both the length and diameter visibly compress more than other varieties. And it makes sense again that that would be of note to Shalon. And it looks like they get like curly almost in that, in the top left drawing that like they curl up like curly hair. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not Cause they got to pull up hair. and get to get above the, the water line. Mm hmm. So they don't but get then too the things, or but the things at the anything. bottom have to curl up to become like a stump, so mm-hmm. that it doesn't get uh, moved. And it has some cool little creme, cremlings too, some little doodles of them, which very much think me make me think of fish or um, trilobites. Arthropods. Yeah, trilobites <laughs> and like crawfish and stuff like that. And the sleepless. Oh goodness! <laughs> yes, those two. All right, let's move on to the next one. All righty. Chasm Fiend. So this is our first real look mm-hmm. at a Chasm Fiend. We've heard, heard descriptions, but we get a visible depiction, and oh my gosh, they're horrifying. Oh, yeah. I faced one down. It was awesome. <laughs> this looks you like did. something that Godzilla would fight. Oh, yeah. This is totally kaiju territory. Mm-hmm. Still a little like too it, small for that, but... <laughs> It's like it's big enough. <laughs> if Wolverine had a pet snapping turtle. Yeah. I could, yeah, snapping turtle's a good comparison. The, the mouth that has a very snapping turtle like. Mm-hmm. Um, Minus the part where it's well, got a Zerg thing going on with extra mandibles. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, it too. does. It's a Zerg snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's but scary. I I love that. Amid the horror of this, Shalon noticed the spren. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, sky eels. Or ones that were with sky eels. Yeah. Well, and again, it makes sense because the, you know, the spren, like 
a chasm fiend should not be able to exist for the reasons that you were talking about with the with lobsters as they get bigger and bigger they're not able to support themselves at these exoskeleton creatures the the enormous ones would not be able to survive in our world yeah they would they would crush but them. because of these sprin bonds there are changes you know that that allow them to survive you know they're they're made lighter they're able to you know live in environments that they normally wouldn't be able to mm-hmm. um yeah, and the, the shalon other... is sort of noticing this this connection yeah and the other thing is, that i love is we have the drawing of the eyes from shalon oh, man. in the bottom right and i love because they got chased by one of these and so there's sort of the glassy eyed normal and then there's the focus <laughs> and you know she at that moment remembered that look mm-hmm. it's oh, yeah. just it's like that will i doubt she had to take a memory i'm pretty sure that she, that one just stuck with her no matter what oh, yeah. mm-hmm. if something that size because at the very bottom you get to see the scale of a person compared to a chasm fiend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes it all the more impressive when you think about when shalon and kaladin faced one down mm-hmm. or when <laughs> dalinar out. caught the claw. Oh, that's right. He did too. Him and Adolin. Oh. Where everyone's like, oh yeah, he's still the Blackthorn. He's still scary. But yeah. And there's a chull in the background, Spe- so you can see how big they are compared to chulls too. Speaking of scary, let's move to the next one. The white spine. Oh yeah. Smaller, but still very scary. Well, these are just nasty. Saber tooth mm-hmm. reptile. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, a white spine, remember, is sort of what led to the downfall. Everything going wrong for Kaladin. Everything in Hearthstone, oh, because that's right. because yeah. it because hurt, killed the sun. Ro, uh, what's his name? Ro. What? Oh. What? what, what? Drunk man. I think um, you're. I think right you're, Lord Ro- you're going for Rashon. Lord uh, Jerk. Rashon. Jerk Rashon. face. Yes. Yeah, his <laughs> son, you know, was attacked by a white spine. And it's and then, what that's what his yeah. father, what, what Kaladin's father was unable to he gave save up. him he from. Was, he was like, no, I can't save him. Which turned Rashon into this, Nasty you know, he, he basically blamed Liren for not being able to save his son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you just, you look at those teeth and what's interesting is the top teeth don't actually look that sharp. And so it makes you realize those top teeth aren't for the cutting into, those are for the leverage that the rest of the jaw gets to just snap down on whatever they get into those, into mm-hmm. those poor, jaws. Poor thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the fact that they, they pop out, they well, retract. And, mm-hmm. Do they retract? And, yeah. The, the very bottom, you can see the two faces. Oh my, that's scary. Yeah. If you, if, yeah, you, if this is show. one, you, I think the drawing really helps. So if you're just listening, mm-hmm. I say, go mm-hmm. check this one out. Cause it's really Scary. good. Yeah. And then Shalon really gets into a lot of the analysis of how it works. She notices the large nasal cavities and she's like, so that means it probably has a really good sense of smell. It depends on it. Um, mm-hmm. The tusks are highly prized as trophies. Um, and she also notices that they have tiny eyes that are in recessed cavities. Oh, that's right. And so they're not visual hunters. They're, they're scent based hunters, Mm -hmm. which I don't know why that's always scary because then you, then when they come around and they're looking for you, they start sniffing and you know, you get that. How do you hide your smell? You get that T-Rex in Jurassic park (laughs) where you stand still, they can't see you. And there's, you know, it's smelling for you type fear or like think, predator or anything like else like that too where is it in predator where they they hide in the mud or something yeah, yeah. well and it, it just i just remember futurama all right everyone don't make a smell <laughs> okay which is, we you know look we're primates developed no defenses against smell um because prime for most primates their primary predator is each other um just because we're too clever and so we don't smell very well so we don't need defenses against that whereas other animals have developed defenses against smelling uh predators Mm -hmm. most anything that performs a stink 
It's uh, just the idea of, yeah, sure, you can come and eat me, but you're going to regret it because you ain't getting another meal for a long time. Or I'm going to make myself taste terrible if you try and eat me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, these things are nasty. Scary. And also, it, it makes that callback to uh, the fair grounds at her father's estate. When oh. she first met Hoyd, she mm-hmm. talks about having only seen one specimen in captivity. Mm-hmm. She saw the white spine in captivity there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move to the next one. Pattern, but on a geographic scale. So this is the representation of the shape of the shattered planes. Mm-hmm. Now, it's interesting because I believe this was drawn by Naj, even though we know that Shallan started mapping out the Shattered Plains herself as well. Yeah. I love his call out. He says, I know you wanted me to draw every plateau, but Shadows Woman, again, Shadows would be mm-hmm. a, uh, a Thren- 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 Threnodite curse. Even I'm not that crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you can definitely see like all the different like shapes that are kind of the Don't symmetry the of it. Yeah. You know, because again, Shalon was noticing this is a symmetrical pattern. And because of that, I can extrapolate what the rest of mm-hmm. the Shattered Plains looks like. Yeah. And it looks like a Rorschach test. <laughs> it does. I see <laughs> guilt. I see beetles. That's what I see. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right. So this one, I had trouble reading because, my goodness, Navani's script is just so flowy. Oh, yeah. It's like cursive on steroids. And again, this is not the women's script. Mm -hmm. But... I can... You know, this is a... This is a translation. But it basically lays out where all of the... Mm -hmm. um, The the battle of... Narak. Narak was... I, again, I like that Brandon puts this in because it suddenly gives us a, a reference mm-hmm. that we can go and say, okay, they went around here. It, it, it helps so much to visualize things. Oh, yeah, because I get lost in battles a lot. Like, especially well, and it, lots of it, terrain, it's, it's, jumping from this place to that place. Yeah, well, and especially where there's literal platforms of battle in mm-hmm. in this area. And so... It's cool to see, like, okay, Adolin was put, like, I like she has the arrows so that you can, okay, Adolin was pushing this way. And so you understand, all right, so his battle that he did, he went one on one with the uh, Eshenai was, mm-hmm. you know, probably right there along that ledge. Yeah. And then you just start going through and trying mm-hmm. to keep track of where everything is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. No, this is this is very useful. Yeah, it's very nice. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the last one, which is another Navani's notebook, but it's a recreation that Naj made, which I thought was really cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is, I think, the coolest thing in, of all of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, well why don't I, you lead us? Well, so I again, this is the I love logo design. I mm-hmm. love flowing and. This is the whole idea that they can represent an entire like poem. Yeah, a poem because this is a Kedic, so it is a poem. Uh, but there's a second layer to it because you can do it visually. And so she has taken this Kedic and she has made it in the form of two storms colliding. Mm-hmm. And that is well, just and, so cool to me as a concept. And because a Kedic is by its nature symmetrical, it works in these symmetrical glyphs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, the dual nature of the Everstorm and the the High Storm colliding like that, it, ju- it just works so well. It's a really, really cool concept and, and design. Well, and just the alight, winds approach, deadly winds alight. Like just... See, and I was so thinking cool. alight, winds approach, deadly winds a light the deadly winds are a light so the winds approach the deadly winds it's the two storms crashing together yeah yeah 
And then Nash's note, this Kedek written on light day, light day, Genesis 1174 adorns the cover of Navani Kalin's personal journal. Inside, she describes firsthand the events leading to the arrival of the Everstorm. The glyphs of the Kedek, as you said, were, were drawn in the shape of two storms crashing into one another. So when did he get access to her journal? That's what makes me go, hmm, what are you doing sneaking around? Oh, he's all over the place. <laughs> I know. But my he's been to the bottom of the journal. ocean and apparently Navani's drawing room. So here's a question yeah. then. Other than in uh, Secret History, have we seen Naj? I'm I imagining feel we have. Made... I'm trying to remember. I could have sworn there was there was some mention of somebody hanging out by the Bridgman, which is when he got the yeah. So when tattoos. he was doing that, so I mean, there's a possibility with that one, but I don't remember the. Are there other times that we've seen him though? I, I hope because he's been going around would... doing all sorts of stuff. But I don't know that he would do it as much like right in front of the protagonist. You know? Right, but I'm saying we we might have moments sort of like Hoyd's appearance in Well of Ascension. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet we have. Sorry, we this is another thing sure. just about this cover though. The fact that it's the cover of the of her of the events leading to the arrival of the Everstorm. It's N- Navani's not only an author; she's her own illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> she did her yes, own I- cover work. Could you imagine mm-hmm. if Brandon had to do his own cover work? Devani can. Yeah. Well, and that again sort of shows Alethi society. Um, you know, all of the different things that Shalon trained in. These are just things that an Alethi lady of status was expected to know. To know. Yeah. And because of that, Navani has taken these skills that she developed and applied them to completely different things than she may have, for example, been expected. Mm -hmm. Not for example, but, but, and again, that's just one of the cool things about Navani is that she does the, the training and she finds ways to apply it to be awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting is the fact that she would go to the detail on a personal journal, not like this would make a lot of sense if she meant to publish these notes, you know, to everyone. So, you know, as a public record of what happened that day, but it, speci- it specifies this as her personal journal. I think she's, just being, or she's, she's keeping notes so she can refer back to them and say, wait, yeah. did I assign so-and-so this, or what did they learn about but that? But she or- did this incredibly artistic display oh, yes. on a, on have, a personal have you, have journal. Have you seen women's journals? To- to be, <laughs> no, I, 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 unlike Naj, but... I don't I don't sneak into women's <laughs> rooms to read their personal journals. To to be fair though, she is also the widow of King Gavilar Kalin. She knows her journals are going to be read. Yeah. Oh yes. You know, she is a record keeper. So that mm-hmm. even though this is her personal journal, all of her personal journals are likely to become public, public. record. Mm-hmm. At least upon her death, if not before. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, that's a lot of art. Yeah. It's a lot of gorgeous art. And just art. the cover too. The cover is really pretty. Yeah, yeah if, I have the the covers on here as well. If yeah. you have um, the only listened to the audiobooks of the Stormlight Archive, you owe it to yourself to go check out the art, either in a hard copy of the book or just on uh, the copper mine they you know they've got the art they've there got as the well pictures there, yeah. or on brandon's website as well yeah mm-hmm. no it uh it looks incredible mm-hmm. and everyone should check it out because because mm-hmm. as someone who gets their books read to them like a proper foreign man <laughs> um this is the, the the big downside to it mm-hmm. that's why i make a point of reading each of the stormlight books Bef- the first time and then later rereads I'll, I'll go back and do the audiobook. Yeah, and I do because the, I want it. I do the reverse. Just because I want to get the art in context in the proper flow and and, and stuff like that. On a random side note, so the cover where where Kaladin's holding his spear like that, I actually used that picture as my reference for how big to make my spear. Makes oh, sense. Nice. <laughs> it's a it's a good one. 
I had to involve my dad and my husband in figuring out the math for it because I was like, wait, this this can't be right. These numbers are not right. And then I did have them off by a lot. So, but yes, but my spear is the same proportional height to me as it is to Khaled in there. Cool. So, yep. Random side Very note. cool. Mm-hmm. So it's like Lynn's spear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm eventually going to do Lynn or... Oh, what, who's the other? There's another. Is it just Lynn who's the the named female Windrunner? She's, she's I think the they mention. One. I think they mention one after the battle because somebody mm. swore an oath during the battle in uh, Rhythm of War, the very okay. the Battle of Hearthstone. Yeah, but anyway, I was gonna. I'm eventually maybe gonna do a Bridgeport uniform, so mm-hmm. it'll be fun. I have the patch. I bought it because I'm not embroidering that. Well, and plus we we met actual Lynn, so I know. Now we have yes, to. Yes, we did. Yes. Well, cool. Well, we love hearing from our listeners, so please keep sending in questions. We would love to to hear from you. We would love to actually take your suggestions or questions you have and answer them on stream. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You can give us ideas for topics that you would like us to discuss. Um, and we'd love, love, love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing. We are insecure in that way. And so we would love for you to assuage our insecurities because that's what content creators love to hear is that they're doing well. I tell you, you're doing great all the time and you, you seem to take it as an insult for some reason. I do not take it as an insult. (laughs) I take it as <laughs> no. I'm I'm 100 percent agreeing that yes, that's very true. Like I I definitely post pictures and I'm like, see, I want people to like this one because I worked really hard to take this picture and make sure it's really perfect. So and then no one will like it. And I'm like, no, it's it's, it's always backwards. Like it? and, and the random so, one of some like you saw a dog, you know, like you know, well, this dog was just uh, leaking well, no, on like, fire was it there, and... Like one of my ones that did the best was I have my my still very unfinished armor helmet from mandalorian as well as my mando helmet and i put like my kid's cowboy hat on top of it like a costume cowboy hat and that got like a whole ton of likes and i'm like really really this gets all the likes what uh-huh. is this? it's because the internet is a fickle mistress it's, it does it's the because moment. mandalorian well that and my my signpost with all my destinations that would that was like my all-time number one anyway mm. but well, that's because you're hitting every single fandom possible. all those fandoms yeah and then making people angry because i have avengers instead of avengers tower and that's a thing. Mm. It's fine. What well, nerds being pedantic? Perish I know. the thought. I know it's crazy. I was like, I can't fit it on there. It's fine. It's really well, if good. you do have questions or feedback, <laughs> you can send all of that in a brief, concise email to Cosmere Studies at gmail dot com. It doesn't have to be concise if you're just gushing over how much you love us. But <laughs> yeah, no, keep going there. <laughs> Write a uh, ballad but, if you so desire. But if you send the uh, the questions and, and such to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. We could hopefully read that as part of the show. We also have a PO box at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere studies, PO box nine, seven, zero, zero, six, three, Orem, Utah, eight, four, zero, nine, seven. We also do our own stuff. We've each, we, we've talked a little bit about some of those things, but Amy, why don't you give us a sort of clear idea of what you got going on right now? So and my where? My, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. And my TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay. All one giant word. My website is www. Wow. Only three W's. Dot Coincidence Cosplay. Dot com. And is that is a long website. <laughs> it is still very sad. And it's there. But yeah, someday I will update it. Um, I am, once again, still working on my Nazgul because my arm slows everything down. But I also finished um, fixing my friend's evil queen crown from Snow White for like the third time. And we're going to make her a new one later. But so that's what I've been doing and other real life stuff and my Nazgul. And then I'm going to start maybe working on pattern. So, but I'm really bad at posting things. So don't be worried if you don't see anything new up because I'm weird like that. But that's me. All right. Jordan, how about you? Uh, You can find me at youtube.com slash splice stream no longer on twitch we're now doing everything on the youtubes as my dad would say and uh we got a new amiibo raid boss tower up but the big thing is i have a playlist called operation 4000 we are three <laughs> we're we're at around 3300 
33 hours watch we need to get to 4000 to get monetized so if you have a free computer that you would uh, like to donate <laughs> to the cause uh just uh just click on that playlist and just let it run there's a, a lot of hours of content on there word of warning on that computer make sure to log out of your normal youtube account um otherwise the algorithm is going to think all you want to watch is me and this is true you, bill has great. run into this it's, it's now recommending all sorts of random videos from For, fortunately it's uh it stopped doing that so. okay good good but I, I had another person say that so maybe warn people to log out first <laughs> uh and as for myself I have another podcast with my friend Dylan where we talk about board games, which are just so much fun. Um, the show is called The Innkeeper's Table, and we have new episodes come out on Friday mornings. We just celebrated two years, and Ta-da! we celebrated that with a new intro. It's got music. It's got voice acting. It's all sorts of cool. It's really cool. So our... Uh, most recent episode was a mailbag episode where we answered a user's question about competitive emotions and how to handle those. If somebody gets a little bit too into the game and perhaps responds in a less than ideal fashion. Um, We had a really good chat around that. And then our next episode coming out this Friday, we did a, another spotlight on a spiel des Yaras, AKA game of the year winner. Um, This one was 1983's winner, Scotland Yard, which is a hidden movement game where somebody's using taxis and trains and other matter trying to escape from the inspectors of Scotland Yard. It's a lot of fun. Um, So you should definitely check that out as well. For our listeners who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you cannot become patrons, we'd love it if you just tell your friends about the show. Uh, we're always trying to to grow our listenership. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, that would be amazing. Also, head on over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies to buy our merch. Yes, that's right. We have merch and you too can adorn yourself with the six logo. <laughs> Even festoon yourself. Yes. I, or drink do, from do we it. do we have festooning clearance uh, i don't think we went through the proper channels <laughs> well no no so actually i uh i talked to uh, the festooning committee and they said we're good the festoonery i was exactly the festoonery amy knows <laughs> yes okay well special thanks to our patron producer mims laundry service some art involves making permanent marts marks ours lies in removing them in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. In our next episode, we're going to take another quick step away from the Cosmere because there is a new audio drama based on Stephen Leeds coming up soon. We'll be discussing the first book in Brandon's series Legion. This is an utterly fascinating action thriller from the perspective of a disturbed genius. It's really cool. So be here for the live discussion. It is very short. It's like 80, 90, between 80 and 90 pages. Yeah, so if you haven't if you haven't read it yet because you've only stuck to the Cosmere, definitely check it it's out. It's a little jump. Yep. So be here for the live discussion at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time at 10.30 p.m. Eastern in two weeks on June 6, 2022 at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret.